These are all the building basics you need in order to get started with Keeple Planks. All you need are your planks and an open space, so go ahead and grab them and let's get started. I always like to start out with five planks next to each other. That creates the foundation and it allows you to be able to move the structure more easily if you need to shift anything at all. The first technique that you could do is the easiest and that's just laying planks flat and stacking them. You can build a tower like this. You can even bring the planks in a little bit each time to add some variety. And then you can move them back out. Another way you can stack your planks is if you set them on their edge. And you can do the same thing if you were laying them flat by bringing them in a little bit more. You can even vary your stacking by laying some upright and then some flat. The other way to stack your planks is if you did them upright. So to do that, you can put them parallel to the plank that you're setting it on. And that would create a, a cleaner line if you're looking at it. It's a little more challenging to stack a plank on top because it creates a little bit more wobble. So the way to make it sturdier is if you angle these planks. If I was trying to connect this tower to another tower by creating like an arch or something, what I can do is start with another base and then I'm going to create a cantilever. I like to start by building it on a flat surface and I'm gonna add two planks here for support. And I'm going to stack two on top like that to secure these two, I'm gonna add another one there. Then I can pick this up easily and place it on top of the tower that I'm working on. And I'll do that for the other side. Now to connect these, I can either continue to add more planks to this one. And to do that, if I'm adding a plank here, I'm gonna have to add the counterbalance here to be able to hold that plank in place. And then you can use your finger to secure that plank and just keep adding planks as you go. If I wanted to connect these with just these two, this is another reason to have the foundation because then I can just slide these right next to each other and then shift them as they need to be shifted. And then I can add a plank right on top like that. And I've created a surface. I can either end it there and just add planks along like that. If you're creating a bridge or a road, you could space them out a little bit if you wanted to make a train trestle, or if you're making something like a castle, this could be a doorway um, into the castle. So if you're wanting to build a spiral, if you're doing a spiral staircase or anything like that, you can start simply by just stack them right on top of each other and then slightly rotate each one like that. If you're imagining the center does not move, only the edge, the outside pieces are shifting. And you could do it like that. You could also do two planks. I like to take two planks and set them like this and then squeeze them together as I build. This makes it a little bit sturdier so you can go up taller than you probably could with just one plank. If you wanted to do a very large spiral, this is the configuration for the planks. You do two end, two end to end, and then two on the side. And then I'll do that again right here. And I'll squeeze these planks together and then put it on top and then slightly rotate it. So it looks like that. And then I just keep going up. If you were building something like a castle and you were doing a spiral, you could even start by creating a foundation and then doing the spiral inside. 15 planks up because 
if you do 15, that equals the length of one plank here. So if I keep going, then I can place some planks on all sides like that. From the outside view, you could see the spiral. You could even keep going from here. If I have a spiral there, it doesn't have to line up right next to it, but you could keep going so it looks like the spiral continues up. If you want to build anything that has a round shape, if you wanted to build something like a bowl or a globe, if you're building a snowman with multiple sizes or something abstract, you would start with maybe four planks. Four planks at the least, but you can also make an even larger globe if you're adding more planks like this. But let's just start with four and we're gonna start with them touching. So this will be the smallest part of the, of the circle. And then I'm going to add four more on top like this, touching. So you have a base and as you build up, you're going to line up the plank with the one below it, but just a little bit further out, right above that plank. If you take a plank and if you lined it up right there, it would be flush with the one below. That would create a nice gradual shape out. If you wanted it a quicker way to come out, you could just, you could pull the planks even further out. And if you're building a globe, you wanna make sure you have the same amount of planks going up as you do coming in so it's more of a perfect round um, sphere. I'm going to build one layer that goes right, that lines right up with the with the plank that's below it. Once you get to a place where your planks are starting to touch again, if you're wanting to build a top to this, I would put two planks across from each other like that, and then you can lay five on top to close off your globe. You can even put two planks here to close off the, the gap if you wanted to and then you can build off of that. If you're building something like a roof and you're slanting your pieces, I'll start with a foundation of 10 planks. You'll want to create a stand in the middle. So I'll stack up about maybe 10 planks. Doesn't have to be exact. To the height that I think I want the roof. I'm gonna add five at a time. And I use two to straighten that. I would have one there. And one here. And I'm going to add them at the same time. And then make sure I add a brace there. If it seems like they're still sliding, you can always add some more weight to finish off the roof, it might be nice to put one plank in the middle so it has a nice cleaner look to the top of it. If you're building wheels, let me show you how to build a small wheel and then we can work up to a larger wheel. So I start with two planks together and then two a little bit further out from each other and then two more a little bit further out and now I'm going to bring them back in a little bit and then just stick one plank on top like that. If you're making a car and it has two wheels, I like to take two planks like this so I can move it and create, build another wheel. And if you're building a small car, you can have them lined up. You can use a plank to measure the distance and just connect them with five planks. Or if you wanted the the top of the car to come out a little more. You can lay five planks right in the middle of that top flat plank. I'm gonna move this one so you can add five more and build off of that from there. If you're building a larger wheel, you just need a little bit extra uh, under support. So you could put a plank in the middle here and slowly bring your planks out. And when you get to a point that you reach three planks up so it's flush with this one. You can lay one right there in the middle like that. And this one's just gonna be a little bit larger. So 
Then I'm gonna start putting these in. And if it's not coming out wide enough, you can just pull them out just a little bit, line them up like that. This could also be a technique if you're wanting to create a round window or something on top of a castle. It's a beautiful um, decorative feature that you can add to buildings. I hope that was helpful for you. If you want more ideas, go ahead and check out our YouTube channel with more videos diving in specifically to some of these building techniques. And you can like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any other videos. We can't wait to see what you create.